Hello, wonderful people. I have about 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, about 15 minutes. So get on. I want to do a little lesson on how the Dow works. We saw such a magnificent uh, increase in the Dow yesterday to 20,000, right? It went up, made history. And um, I had someone post something on my page about um, the America being made great, right? And because of this increase that we saw, uh, how trillions of dollars have trickled into the economy. And so instead of posting this and writing, I just one thought I would get on and kind of explain it. Um, I used to do a lot of investing in my 20s and early 30s when I was making them six figures in corporate America. Uh, ministry has not afforded me to come back to that yet, but I believe I'm on the rise. Amen. But want to kind of just give us an understanding of something. Um, so log on, tell somebody to get on. I know you can go back and look at this after the broadcast is over, but um, I think it's important. And I, I want to say this. I always try to be clear about me knowing what my assignment is in the earth and that assignment uh, being the ministry of the gospel. But Jesus was political, right? He dealt with the Pharisees. He dealt with the Sadducees. He understood the law. And so just because we're Christians does not mean that we should not speak out. As a matter of fact, in, um, you know, we quote Proverbs 31 about King, you know, Solomon, a Proverbs 31 woman. But before that, his mother is giving him instruction on speaking out for those who are disenfranchised and uh, so start reading Proverbs 31 at the beginning. Uh, Jeremiah, so many of the prophets uh, dealt with political issues. Um, and so did Jesus, right? And the Bible tells us that the government is up on uh, our Father, our God, our Savior's shoulders. So we have a responsibility to keep people informed. If God has called you to do that, um, I have always been one that God has called to share information, to help people uh, to so that everyone is have the same playing field. You don't have to agree with my position. I don't have to agree with your position, but the facts are the facts, right? And so if we are informed, we can make better decisions. We can count up the cost, right? And so I want to just give a real quick, and, and I don't profess to know everything about how all of this works, but the part that I know, I know, and I, I want to share with you. Because there is a, oh, my God, you know, the stock market did this, the Dow did that, and our country is coming back. We're being made great again. But let's be clear. Let's be clear. Uh, U.S. news, money, and very uh, other reputable and fair reporting money, uh, news reporting, uh, told us that over, gosh, how many millions of jobs uh, – there has been a steady climb, a climb in the economy and in the stock market uh, since since 2007, with the private sector bringing in over 15 million jobs in the last four years. In the last four years, and um, us seeing the lowest unemployment rate in history of like 4.6%. And so it's important that we understand that even in the middle of 2016, like midsummer, uh, the Dow was already at, I want to say they said 18,000. So it was already uh, design, destined, I'll use that word, destined to be at 20,000. It was predicted that this was going to happen. So it's not so much about Trump coming into office. It was destined to happen. And okay, great. He can take the credit for it. And those who don't understand that can give him credit for it. But we, the economy was in a good place when he took office. Things were already increasing. Now, 
Let's also understand that the Dow focuses on the top 30 companies that are registered on the Dow. Okay, and if you go look what those are, Apple and uh, healthcare and technology and uh, Chase Bank and uh, Chevron Oil. And I also want you to be clear that of those 30 companies, Seven of those that I could count look on looking on in Forbes on the companies that Trump owns or let me restate that the company that Trump has shares in specific companies that he has shares in. OK, and has shares at the top one percent of share owners. OK, so that means that he owns shares that range between about 500000 to $1.5 million, okay? And this was in, I think, his last report in, oh gosh, 2016 before he started supposedly uh, selling some things off. So for you to understand that, of those 30 companies, the President of the United States has shares in at least seven of those. The top 1% of those 30 companies who people have shares in them, they're the ones who made the money yesterday. <laughs> it wasn't us. And listen, unless you have shares in those 30 companies, okay, any level of shares, you could be the, the middle, you could be the low part. At a minimum, you could make $5,000, $9,000, mid-range people will make about five hundred k. Top-tier people would make about $3.2 million. So unless you have shares in those companies, this is just a real high-level thing, you didn't make any money yesterday. That wasn't a country benefit. Now, will it benefit the company, the country at some point? Yes, because, listen, trickle-down is still here. I don't know what y'all trickle down is still here and it's in full effect. Amen. So it's important that we understand this started this 20,000 bump or whatever we saw in the Dow. It was already on its way there. So, OK, we have a businessman in office. And listen, will there probably continue to be an increase in the Dow? Yes. Will there prayerfully still be an increase in the stock market and investors? As long as the investors are happy with what's going on, then absolutely. Let's be clear. He's one of them investors. He ain't going to do nothing to make his friends mad. So this isn't about not liking Trump. I pray for the president. This isn't about because I voted or didn't vote. This is not what this is for him. This is about us being informed and understanding understanding what is really going on the changes he is making when i post something i do my best to do due diligence and to do my research and if i miss something or misquote something i try to go back and fix it or whatever but this is about us being informed this is about the facts the facts and what did they say it what was it uh what was that movie? He said, you can't handle the truth. So listen, this is about the facts. So if we are informed, we know how to pray. If we are informed, we know how to contact our senators and our congressmen. If we are informed, we know how to get involved. And so my assignment is just to share the information, help us to be informed. I love the dialogue, but let me help you with something. You put something crazy on my page. I will delete it. I won't necessarily block you. I'll inbox you and let you know why I deleted it. But I'm not here to argue. It's the facts. And you can go do the research for yourself, right? And so we love God. We love God. We love God. And we trust God. And I still declare the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And the Bible has told us he is going to command them to give it over. So keep getting rich because the rich got richer yesterday. But the programs and the things that uh, Trump is threatening, actually moving forward to change and dismantle, to decimate, will affect minorities greatly, minorities who own businesses, minorities. That's anybody that is non, 
uh, Caucasian and male. So that's my Caucasian sisters. That's all women, Latino, black, and any other nationality. That's African-American men. That's those who are impoverished, those who are middle class. We may not see a lot of benefit in that. I guess if we still consider ourselves middle class, amen, Jesus. But you won't see that. You won't see the benefits of this. So we certainly trust that there will continue to be an incline in our economy and our stock market. But how do you get wealthy? Go look at what Trump and his boys are investing in. Go look at what Gates uh, has money in. Go look at what uh, Buffett has money in. And let's go find us a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. When you get your taxes, good God almighty, go put, I don't typically get taxes, but go find some money, even if it's five hundred dollars, and invest in what they're investing in. Of the top six financial institutions, Trump has stock. Stock. Let's be specific. He has shares. He has shares in five of those. Of the major gas company, uh, uh, oil companies, he has shares in Chevron, I believe, Exxon, Chevron brought Texaco. So go look. Go look and see what they got their money in, y'all. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Let's get smart about this. If nothing else, <laughs> according to God, him having to divulge and to share and folk who go out and find out what where his money is it's letting us know where to put our money so tap into that i taught y'all we talked about this the other day tap into the wealth and the business acumen that he is sitting on that knowledge let's tap into that and if nothing else he going to leave office and all his boys, all them that's sitting up there in the cabinet and the sisters that's sitting on some millions and billions, they going to leave wealthier. Why not? Why not? Let us tap into that, right? Hey, Sister Anita. Hey, Sister Chantel. So I'm not going to keep you long today. I just wanted to share this little lesson uh, about, um, about the Dow and how it works. Was there anything else I needed to share as it related to that? Um... So, yes, did someone benefit yesterday? Yeah, the rich got richer. If you got stock in them top 30 companies, absolutely. You got some shares. Yes, you did. But the, the vast majority of this country, as you are making America great, because that's what they keep saying, then, or are you making yourself great, your portfolio great? Hmm. Something to think about, right? So let's get wise. Let's get wise. Let's get informed. Let's get involved. After you pray, go do something. Go do something. Contact your Congress, your federal congressmen. Contact your senators. Yeah, and then I also learned how the um, electoral college, I finally understand how that works now. Look at that. God showed me. So, yeah, real quick, electoral college. Real quick. So your senators at each in each state, and this is why your vote counts. This is why you got to vote. See, people, oh, your vote, our vote don't count. It's the Electoral College. But this is what you have to understand about the Electoral College. It's the two senators in each state, and it's all of the federal representatives. So based on at the end of the election, of the end of the election day, they count all the people who voted. So if all the people, like in California, voted for the Democrats, that's the popular vote in that state. So the majority of that popular vote went to the Democrat. So that's where all of those 55 electoral votes went to her. So Michigan, Michigan, uh, the popular vote, pe vote, people that came out and voted, those votes went towards the Republicans. So because of that, and we're talking about the president's vote, because of that, all of those, I think it's 11 or 10, I don't remember how many, electoral college votes, the two senators and the federal representatives, all of those votes go to, went to the Republicans. Part of the issue in Michigan was that people didn't come out and vote. Democrats didn't come out and vote. Whatever, mad at Hillary, I don't know, discouraged about the economy, I'm not sure. But this is why. This is why now I know and I'm happy. I told y'all all I need is a word. All I need is the information and the knowledge to get informed and I'll know I know what to do. So this is why your vote counts. You have to vote because based on your vote is the direction is where all of those electoral votes will go in that state. So 
I hope we learned something this morning. Uh, please feel free to share uh, this post. But now you have a little bit more understanding, hey, Natalie, of how the Dow works. OK, and what really happened yesterday, the incline was already happening before history was made yesterday with the 20,000. It was already the economy was already rising. And so prayerfully, we will see more of that. But where my concern lies it are the changes that will affect our children's education, that will affect health care, that will affect um a, women, a woman's right to choose, I've talked to you about that, uh, uh, even just to choose pre-pregnancy, how we care for our bodies and our reproductive system. Ain't nobody got no say in that. Pre-pregnancy, okay? Uh, that will affect um, other changes that he's making. Uh, stop and frisk. Really? No, no. We can't let that be. We can't let that be. It cannot come back. Sending people out of this country who came in illegally or came in uh, because their parents came in illegally, but they were children. They've been since born here. People shouldn't have to live in fear. This is not Nazi Germany. Now, my opinion, nope, people shouldn't have come in illegally, but let's move forward from here out. Build your wall, put your fences up, do what you're going to do, but don't have people fearful who are already here. And have gained some level of citizenship who are contributing to the economy. If that's the case, you're talking about shipping out criminals. It's a whole bunch of criminals in Washington. There's a whole bunch of criminals across the country. They came from other states. This thing about taking the money away from uh, the safe cities. In the Bible, those cities are called cities of refuge. Do you understand what you're doing? When you do that, you're tapping into some, something that has a biblical connotation, that has a biblical reference and a biblical understanding, and you're about to take that away. Biblically, those were called cities of refuge, where people could go and find safety. But should people who are here now be thrust out and put on somewhere to go back to a country they ain't been to in 20 years, one born there just because of what their parents did? Or even those who came here, I'm saying moving forward, put the policies and procedures in place. But people shouldn't have to be afraid. We shouldn't have to be afraid like this is the Underground Railroad and we got to go hide. Y'all better hear me. Pray and act. Pray, speak up, speak out, and don't let, please don't let 2020 come and you ain't voted. You ain't registered. Glory to God. Let us be informed. Let us be wise. So that's my lesson for the day. I pray you all have a good day. Um, let's see now. Uh, I think that was it. I think that was it. My only other statement uh, to the person who said that, uh, who shared with me on my page, I said, if what the changes he's making, the things that are happening, if this is what making America great looks like, then what does bad, how do we define bad? Oh, I'm just saying. Uh, the things I posted about the programs and the um, things he's looking to take away, some of them could be taken away. Okay, that's fine. But when you're talking about messing with minority development money and money uh, for police departments and money monies related to uh, a woman's safety for domestic violence and things like that, that's a problem. And we need to speak up. So contact your senators, contact your federal and state representatives, why not? And let them know what you don't agree with. This is part of the reason why the Women's March, um, why they were marching for the things, the changes he's making that is going to affect and impact our communities, our families, our country. While the rich are getting richer, the middle and the, the lower classes, and I don't want to call them lower class, but economic or socioeconomically, uh, disenfranchised will not be taken care of. And so I bless God for knowledge and understanding. And I still declare the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just and God's going to command them. He's going to command them according to uh, Ecclesiastes 2, according to Proverbs 13, according to Deuteronomy 8 and Deuteronomy 28. He's going to command them to give it over. 
Hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. I pray that you have a great, great Thursday. We thirst and hunger after righteousness. God bless you. Hey, don't forget, register for uh, the vision, the vision seminar on February the 4th. Have a few days left. And then certainly uh, our business empowerment, our business epic conference, April the 8th. Hey, I didn't told you. Business Ackerman, tap into what's going on and uh, let let the conference and let the seminar help you to get there even quicker. quicker. Register, okay? God bless you. Have a great day.